What I can never understand about this piece um, is that it's a part of a collection of six um, Opus 5 and uh, the others are kind of the, the kind of piece that you'd expect Saw to write um, his students. But this one just shines out, it's just fantastic, so much better than the others and uh, I can't really understand why. I know a little bit about the history of it. He wrote it for his wife in 1814, a year after they were exiled from Spain. Uh, so that may be why there's some sadness in the piece. As far as interpretation goes, I would say the two most important words are elegant and graceful. And I'm gonna talk you through what I mean as we go through the piece. Um, how to sort of, but it's kind of halfway between Baroque and uh, Romantic. Not too much the vibrato, not too much rubato, and very few rest strokes. Um, okay, so let's let's start. Um, oh, one other thing: the edition that I'm using is free. You can get it free online. It's uh, if you go to Tecla, um, just Google. And Dante Largo Tecla and you'll find it it's a free download you just have to give your email but I'll give a link to it in the description as well but they're the best editions of Tecla especially this sort of music um, because they use the original publication so you know it's exactly what Saw intended and uh, there's a couple of places in the piece where I'll talk about that as well Okay, so I start, I don't do as most do, I don't do it up there, two and four, I'm in um, fourth position there, so. Now this first sort of important fingering, I've got, rather than the bar, I've got two on the G, one on the D, and three on the B there, and you can slide the three up to there. There's a nice change. Now that phrasing, strong, weak, that is the kind of pattern um, that you get a lot in this piece at the beginning as well. Again, graceful, uh, not the big rest strokes, you know, that kind of thing, but slur, three, all three strokes, A, slur, M, I, M, I, A and M together. And the other hand is pretty straightforward, it's four, three, one, four, two, one. this bit here I like to cut that top A and also the A in the accompaniment like that so the way I do that is with the thumb and lift the first finger and then the second time second motif again cut with the thumb and go from first to open so you don't have to worry about cutting but it sounds really crisp if you do it like that and then so there's a nice fingering so you slide one and four you've got one on the F sharp, two on the D, but then I swap to three and four and you're ready for this lovely chord there. So I'll show you that again. Now this bit here, it's nice if you cut the, um, like we sometimes do with the bass strings, we cut them after we've played them. 
with this one, cut the melody, the top melody, like that. So you play the F sharp, then you play the D, and you come back and cut the F sharp. But it's all done with the A finger because you're playing a chord there. Um, now, editions, we were talking about that, um, the Tecla edition. So this original, you probably know this bit now as like that. But the original, and I like to try and be as true as possible to the original, was just this. Which sounds a bit odd if you're used to the old way. I suspect that was Segovia doing that, unless somebody knows different. If you do, leave, leave a note in the comments. But... slide four down to there and that's all uh, I, I am slur okay and now the second time it happens you go into the second time ending now the last one of those I move up into fifth position okay Shape, save you a nasty shift. Yeah, so this next little section, um, most people play the melody like that. I don't think it should be like that because if you look how it's written in bar eight, I think it's just that. And you have to really keep the accompaniment down to achieve that. It's quite difficult. And it happens again here. So that's something to try and aim for. Um, the fingering for that, I come up to seventh position with one and it can all ring on underneath the A. So I play... So I play that A there with a the fourth, but then I move down into fifth position. So you've got this legato figure the end of that little passage I like to just for interest I like to change the um, the texture so I've got the melody is still legato but the the accompaniment below it is staccato and it works really nicely um, throughout this piece there rest that's in bar 14 you get these rests written out actually that's slurred which I don't play generally but um, yeah when, when I say play the rests what I mean is really take them literally so and you're actually cutting the strings and it's quite it gives quite a dramatic moment now the next little um, passage is really lovely. So what I'm doing there is I'm using quite a lot of rubato. Um, so I'm I'm pausing a little bit, so enjoying that clash. but I, I make up the time um, throughout the rest of the little passage. It's called rubato, which means robbed time. Now fingering wise, it's pretty straightforward, but here I slur one, two, and then one, two, three, all plucked. 
and slur the last one like that. So back to second position. One, four. I don't play. Just doesn't sound as crisp as. Bringing on. So that whole passage. A strong week again. Now this bit the staccato. That's a really lovely bit. Now how do I get those staccatos? I'm just playing and bringing the flesh of the thumb back onto the string. Like that. Apart from the very last one, uh, and the fingering here is, I've got two and four, and I use one on the bass note, and then I've got one and four. Now this A here, I stop that with the I finger, like that. For the whole of that passage, So this is the same as before. You keep three down and you've got two, four and three to keep one free for the bass note here. And that's hard. I'm playing that by sliding the two from the E to the D. Ready, up, play the accompaniment there's quite enough so that the D rings on above it. And I play this for one and then I slide one. I just find that easier than four four there. Okay, so that whole passage. Notice the basses aren't staccato that time. Four one. And some more of that rubato there. much vibrato. Anyway we're going to the minor section now. Remember to keep the accompaniment down there. Now that fingering's nice. Open four then up to second position one on the C sharp. Slide one. Slide it back down again. And then squeeze in four. Okay, so the whole of that. So I'm using two and three, one and two. Cut the bass there, that's one of those played rests. It's uh, quite a stretch. But I'm going to talk about the um, why you get some of these stretches in Saw's music in a second. But now four down first, and then stretch back for the chord. If you've got a stretch, it's always good to put the little finger down first, and then go back with the others. Now you got one and three on the. B flat and G. Slide the four and now you've got two on the B flat and open G. So 
So if you do that quietly enough, the listener won't know that you're playing it on different strings. Um, so that sounds like this. Um, now here's uh, where I was talking about the, the guitars of Saul's time were different. Stretches, you get these horrendous stretches like that. Um, now, before I explain why that is, I'm going to refinger it. Four, I'm going to take the, lose the bass and put it the second finger on the B flat. So you just get a quaver in the bass. Now, it is possible if you're feeling brave. just about it's very uncomfortable but uh, now the reason that is so difficult our guitars are bigger than source guitars that stretch would have probably looked a bit like that because the string length was so much shorter that's why a lot of these source studies you've got these horrendous stretches they weren't that bad in his day but um, yeah I would just lose that um, E in the bass. Um, so I'll just play that bit once again if I can find it. Sorry. Like that. Okay, that's bar 29. And then. Now here's another bit that. Well, I've changed this from the. to put in a semi-quaver rest in the melody but I don't do that I let it ring on but then I cut the E flat and the C like that and when you play it like that it sounds a bit sounds a bit harsh but um, in context it's not so bad slur on that and I slide the third back slide it back and then I squeeze in the fourth like that okay so that whole passage So the next bit you could play up in fifth position but I'm not going to do that I'm going to play it down here open stretch there and then and then this lovely chord and that's another sore stretch there it wouldn't have been so bad on his guitar but just about playable on our guitars that's all pretty straightforward and you've got a repeat of the now this bit's tricky because we've got this that bit there just not going to happen <laughs> down in second position so we are down here but I want to get up to here to play this bit uh, up here because it sounds so much better up there so I'll just talk you through that fingering first so you've got the bar on the seventh the F's played with the second and we slur a little spread on the chord as well instead of and then four slur onto three four okay but getting up there's the problem so we're down here with the fourth on the D 
That's not very nice. Okay, so what I do is I play a long note, then a short, like it's intentional. <laughs> Cheating a little bit, so. And while I've shortened that, it gives me time to get up into seventh position. And you have to be careful again not to let the listener know that you're playing it on different strings. So try and make those sound the same. And one thing that might help you is I've got A there just sitting on the string so when you do this you're not gonna going to hit that string by mistake. I'm just resting the A there. So that whole pad is a bit complicated but it's worth it. So just that one bar, there's quite a lot of work that you need to do. Uh, sorry. And again, don't um, try and keep the tone quality here elegant not kind of uh, we don't want none of that going on not like in the Tarova where it's lovely in this it's, it's not so suitable now that fingering there for then we go to one on the B flat and we've got two on the uh, lower B flat and an open and then go to the four okay um, forgot where we go after that yeah now we go down into fifth position position like that and play the A on the third on, with the third finger on the fourth string and the fourth finger on the fifth string to, for the F. Then notice one of those rests. That's quite dramatic. I think it's definitely intended because the, the rhythm's a little strange there anyway. It could have been... But it's definitely semi-quavers. much of a pause on there but a nice spread might be good make sure that inner voice quiet so it's not you know and another one of those played rests and after that really you're um I don't really do a lot differently with, with the second half so yeah that's it if you've enjoyed this subscribe hit the uh, bell notification and you won't miss any more of these and any ideas for the next one drop me a line thanks for watching <laughs>